Hey there folks, Zach here. To make the most of our last few lessons together, I decided to record a quick primer on our final topic of the course, triple integrals. This topic can feel tricky at first, so I want to make sure we have lots of time to work on examples. I'll ask that you please watch this video and take some notes before next Tuesday's class. In my opinion, the best motivator for triple integrals comes from one of our applications of double integrals. For this application, suppose that we have some 2D region R in the xy plane that represents some sort of a flat metal plate. If we know the mass density, sigma xy, at each point on that plate, then the double integral of this mass density function throughout R represents the plate's total mass. I gave you some intuition for why this is true, but if you wanted to argue a little bit more formally, perhaps you could try the following. Cut up the region R into a bunch of tiny pieces. The mass density on each of these pieces should be relatively constant. It shouldn't vary by too much. Thus, we can use the familiar formula density equals mass over area, which is valid for constant density, to say that since the density is roughly constant on this piece, the mass of the piece is roughly density times area. It's roughly the density sigma xi yj times the area delta x delta y. We could then add up these approximate masses over all of our pieces to get an approximation of the plate's total mass. Of course, these approximations will get better and better and better when we use smaller and smaller pieces, so the exact mass of the plate should be the limit of these sums. Does this look familiar? It should! This is exactly our definition for the double integral of sigma over r. So there you go. The double integral of the density function computes the total mass of the plate. Of course, this discussion has taken place entirely in the 2D setting. An interesting question at this point is, can we do the same sort of thing to determine the total mass of a three-dimensional solid? This is what's going to lead us to triple integrals. Suppose now that we're working with some solid region E living in R3, as well as some function f of three variables x, y, z. If we're thinking of E as a physical solid object, like a brick, with a mass density at each point given by f of x, y, z, can we still find a way to determine the total mass of the solid? The answer is yes, and perhaps we can figure out how to do so using motivation from the two variable setting. Let's start by cutting up our solid into a bunch of tiny 3D pieces. Just like in the 2D case, on each of these pieces, the mass density should be relatively constant. It shouldn't change by too much. We can therefore make use of the formula density equals mass over volume, the 3D version of the formula from the last slide. Since the density is roughly constant on this piece, the mass of the piece is roughly density times volume. The density is given by our function f, f at some point x i y j z k. And the volume of the piece is, well, it's the volume of this little cube. It's delta x times delta y times delta z. Just as before, we're going to add up these approximate masses to estimate the total mass of our solid. The exact mass can then be obtained by taking a limit of these approximations as our pieces get smaller and smaller and smaller. Thus, the total mass is given by this nasty expression here, which is what we define to be the triple integral of the function f throughout this 3D domain e. As you may have noticed, the steps we took to defining this triple integral were very similar to the steps we took when defining the double integral. The difference now is that we're performing these calculations in a space of higher dimension, and we're focusing on mass as our motivation rather than volume. There's a good reason for this. In general, triple integrals don't compute volumes. No, no, no. In the double integral case, we could think of the integral as computing a volume or a signed volume under the graph of our function z equals f of x, y. But now our functions have three inputs and one output, meaning their graphs live in a four-dimensional space. So we can't think of triple integrals as computing a volume in the same way we think of a double integral as computing a volume. Some of our geometric interpretation is lost. Instead, I'd like you to think of the triple integral as some sort of a sophisticated, continuous sum throughout a 3D domain. 
And in certain cases, like when f represents a mass density, for example, we have ways of interpreting this sum. Our methods for evaluating triple integrals are essentially the same as those for double integrals. We write the triple integral as three iterated integrals, one with respect to x, one with respect to y, and one with respect to z. If you happen to be in the particularly nice setting where your domain E is a rectangular box, that is, x, y, and z are all bounded between constants, then you can set up those integrals in any order you like, and you can switch the order around freely. So for example, if we're trying to integrate a function over this rectangular box E, where x is bounded between 0 and 1, y is bounded between 1 and 4, and z is bounded between 1 and 3, sometimes denoted like this, we could write the integral in various orders, dx, dy, dz, dy, dz, dx, and so on. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick the order dz, dy, dx. So our outermost integral, which is going to be written with respect to x, has bounds 0 and 1. Then the next integral, which is with respect to y, has bounds 1 and 4. And finally, the integral with respect to z on the inside has bounds 1 and 3. Our function in this example is 6x squared z, and we have our differentials, dz, dy, dx. You probably know where to go from here, but let's just work through the first step together. Starting with the innermost integral, an antiderivative with respect to z is going to be, well, 6x squared, this is treated like a constant, times z squared over 2. We sub in the bounds, giving us the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 1 to 4 of 24x squared dy dx. At this point, we have a very straightforward double integral. As an exercise, go ahead and work through the remainder of the calculation. You should obtain a final answer of 24. In this case, we might interpret the result as the total mass of E, say in kilograms, assuming a mass density at each point x, y, z of 6x squared z kilograms per meters cubed. Of course, integrating over rectangular boxes is sort of the nicest case you can ask for. Setting up triple integrals over regions where not all three variables are bounded between constants is often a fair bit more involved, and this will be a major focus in next week's lessons. In this case, just like for double integrals, we would have to be much more careful when changing the order of integration. I'll end this video by commenting on some of the applications of triple integrals. One application that we've mentioned several times throughout this lesson is in finding the total mass of your 3D solid E by calculating the triple integral of its mass density function. More generally, however, if f describes the density of some quantity, be it population, charge, calories, whatever, then the triple integral of that density function can be interpreted as the total amount of that quantity throughout the solid, total population, total charge, total number of calories, and so on. It turns out that triple integrals can also be used to calculate volumes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Zach, didn't you just say earlier that triple integrals don't calculate volumes? So which is it? Well, it's true that the triple integral of a general function f can't really be interpreted as a volume or a sign volume in 3D space. But the triple integral of the constant function 1 does indeed compute the volume of the domain e. This is just like how the double integral of the constant function 1 over a 2D region r computes the area of r, and how the single integral of the constant function 1 over an interval ab computes the length of ab. You can actually see this by returning to the definition of the triple integral. When we integrate the constant function 1, we're just adding up a bunch of tiny little volumes throughout the solid E. So perhaps it makes sense that the result of this computation is the volume of E itself.